sanctions against uh, the Russian Federation. We'll discuss with him what can actually break Putin's regime. Uh, at 3 p.m. we'll have Alexander Motozyanek, spokesman, spokesperson of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. Colonel Motozyanek will tell us about the situation on the front lines, current situation on the front lines. And right now oh, we have with us uh, Serhii Haidai, head of Luhansk Oblast State Administration. Uh, Serhii, good afternoon. Could you please tell us what's happening in the oblast, in your oblast or province, what's the situation there? Hello. Uh, uh, situation is uh, sustain stable but difficult. All villages and towns in Luhansk province are shelled. The hottest uh, locations are Rubizhna and Papasna. There, there is com there are combat actions within those cities. Uh, position. Uh, based, uh, uh, the enemy does not move forward. They cannot move forward. They cannot break our defense, so they shell all around. Lysychansk, Severodonetsk, Rubizhna, uh, Papasna, and Hirska. Uh, those communities are under fire every day, both from mortars and uh, artillery, uh, aviation, grad multiple launch rocket systems, Rogan and Smirch, uh, rocket systems. Everything. The day before yesterday, every district in Lysychansk was shelled by artillery. Uh, many people died. Civilians, these are civilians. Their bodies were just laying there in the streets, and for a long time it was even impossible to take their dead bodies from the streets because of shelling. Unfortunately, uh, we have uh, some. Uh, really terrible cases like uh, 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 sh sh uh, the private house was shelled and there were two children, a girl two years old, a boy eight years old and their parents, all of them suffered, but unfortunately we, the girl died, we could not save her life. We have huge problem with humanitarian aid for Papasna community and Drubizhne for those towns because of shelling we just cannot deliver uh, those cargoes that aid there we bring them to Lysychansk to Severodonetsk but we cannot bring them to Rubizhna and to Papasna we cannot bring them to those towns every day uh, evacuation continues uh, with regard to humanitarian corridors as such, there are no such corridors. Several times we agreed upon such corridors, but still the enemy continues shelling the territory, shelling the buses on the road. Today we, are, we have already had the first case one in the city of Lysychansk. The mine was found. Most probably that mine was dropped from a drone, from a UAV or some quadrocopter. Uh, and now uh, our uh, Mine sweepers from state emergency service are handling it. So the situation is quite difficult in the oblast as a whole. About evacuation, Serhii, could you please tell us uh, whether uh, residents of Luhansk oblast, Luhansk province, have to evacuate uh, as much as, as soon as possible? Do you believe it's needed? Yes uh, or not? Yes. Well, really, it has been needed. Uh, since the very first day of this war, since the very first day we have been doing carrying out evacuation. By now we have officially evacuated more than 18,000 people and evacuation uh, continues every day. In addition to those official numbers, uh, people also try to live on their own, on their own cars. Uh, we uh, receive help from various uh, NGOs, for example, Vostok SOS. We uh, receive help from Protestant church. They also uh, transport people from Severodonetsk every day. So on average, we transport 500 people a day. Uh, there are some more productive days. For example, yesterday, during the day, we managed to transport to evacuate more than 1,000 people. Uh, now, Ukra as long as Ukrainian railways collaborate with us, we'll continue transporting people, even though buses are shelled sometimes. Uh, thank God, those are empty buses when they they are going back. The enemy uh, destroys those buses. By but I work uh, with my colleagues. I am in touch with my colleagues from other oblasts: Ternopil, Dnipro, Khmelnytsk uh, uh, oblasts, and uh, my, my colleagues uh, provide us with school buses to replace those broken buses, to replace them with working vehicles. So we don't stop evacuation even for a day. Serhii, we have information whereby in Luhansk Oblast now there has been no one village or town which have not been shelled. 
is this the case? Yes, I said from the very beginning that the whole territory all across Luhansk Oblast it has been shelled. Indeed, there is no one location, no one town or village which will not shell. There are just some uh, towns and villages uh, where the enemy focuses their shelling. Now the enemy uh, concentrate their troops to uh, run some offensive action in two directions. Papasna and the second one is between Rubizhna and Kremina. They don't stop their attacks. Every day uh, our defenders uh, fight and resist several attacks. All the time uh, they, uh, uh, the enemy loses uh, uh, dozens of people and a lot of vehicles, and still they send freshly mobilized people against our positions. They try to use those newly mobilized uh, soldiers to somehow break through our defense, and then people from so-called Donetsk People Republic and Chechen people who are fighting for Russia will join. Well, Sergei, speaking about destruction in the oblast, uh, well, according to your estimates, uh, whether there are many residential buildings destroyed, what could you say? Well, see, uh, the critical number, critical number of buildings has been destroyed. All hospitals in the obla in our oblast have been shelled. A huge number of schools, kindergartens, uh, those. Uh, Houses for the elderly, boarding schools have been shelled. In Kremina, tank directly shelled against uh, the house for the elderly uh, until it broke. There have been 56 uh, uh, dead bodies. There were 84 people total there. And uh, it continues all the time. It always happens like that. You know, they are bombing everything which is there. They don't need people. They don't need houses. They just need to somehow uh, get to that border of Luhansk Oblast, boundary of Luhansk Oblast. Uh, Serhii, what is the infrastructure condition? What about water supply, natural gas supply? Whether you have it in Luhansk Oblast, how uh, do those utilities work? Uh, you know what? The whole critical infrastructure, uh, sorry, for this tautology, but critical infrastructure has been critically broken, critically damaged. They're shelling all the time. Everything has been damaged. Electrical substations, just poles have been destroyed, poles for wiring. Gas distribution pumps, everything has been broken completely broken. Basically, our repair teams are heroic people, and every day they try to recover at least something, at least in some towns, at least in some quarters, to restore electricity supply or natural gas supply. But they uh, fail because, you know, there's the late, latest example. Yesterday, with huge efforts, they uh, restored electricity supply, and in Severodonetsk, electricity appeared somehow in Severodonetsk. But people did not even manage to recharge their mobile phones because, because there was another shelling again, and the wiring was broken again. So it's absolutely critical, and it's even impossible to restore it. Uh, we see that we even have some uh, communication failures. We understand that everything is very problematic on your side. If you have any questions in the studio, please ask those. I see that information has been rather complete, so there are no questions. Serhi, you may want to add something for residents of Luhansk Oblast. Maybe you'd like to address them, what they should do, any advice from you. I would like to address those people who are in shelters, who stay in shelters, and they believe that they will be able to just stay there and wait through this situation. You know, more than once we had situations when we find people and we ask them, please, 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 uh, should evacuate because they will meet you. You will have some accommodation and food and clothing, and you will be safe. People refuse. People refuse. Keep they keep refusing until war comes to next building or their building is broken, and then we take those people from under those uh, ruins, and then they want to evacuate. Please don't waste time. Uh, every day, our 
police officers are risking their lives when accompanying those convoys. Our drivers risk their lives uh, with all those sh that shelling. They heroically drive uh, vehicles. Our people in uh, oblast military and civil administrations who accompany people, look for people. They uh, stay in locomotives with uh, uh, engineers and they come from station to station to then to put people on trains going to western ukraine don't waste time please 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 i would also like to ask young people who are able to uh, call for assistance for us to know where there are people in which shelter maybe there are some new shelter we are unaware of maybe you can provide us with some address for us to bring humanitarian aid or maybe you can explain to those older people that they should not stay there till the very last moment. Please help us. This is war. This is not a problem of an individual building or quarter or certain territory. This is a problem for the Ukrainian people as a whole, because Putin is uh, running this war not against the Ukrainian armed forces, but against the Ukrainian people. He hates us. He wants to destroy us completely. So please don't waste time. Please help us with evacuation. We'll make all we can. We'll do all we can. Thank you, sir. He thank you for finding this finding time to join us. Uh, Thank you for this extremely important information. So uh, in our studio, uh, we were listening to the head of uh, the provincial of, of Foblis administration of Luhansk Oblast. Our next briefing will be at uh, 2 p.m. And there we'll have Vadim Denisenko, advisor to the Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine. Please stay with us and goodbye.